Hi, I'm Robert Evans. I work here at Cracked, and I'm something of an amateur drug historian. You could call me a narchaeologist. And I spent the last year working on a book, A Brief History of Vice, that experiments with all the ancient ways our ancestors used to get high. And today I've brought four of those methods to the Cracked offices, and I'm going to experiment on them with my coworkers, at least until somebody stops us. This is a little thing I like to call a nose pipe. It is one of the oldest forms of smoking tobacco, and it is actually recorded in one of the first written descriptions we have of a European encountering tobacco, which was written by the governor of Hispaniola, an island near Cuba, in 1535. Among other evil practices, the Indians have one that is especially harmful, the ingestion of a certain smoke they call tobacco. They imbibe the smoke until they become unconscious and lie sprawling on the ground like men in a drunken stupor. Now, you might notice that cigarettes don't at all make people pass out like men in a drunken stupor. That's because modern tobacco is around 3% nicotine. Wild tobacco, 9 to 10% nicotine. It also doesn't hurt that smoking it through a nose pipe gets the smoke directly into your mucous membranes much faster, making for a more powerful high. Now, I'm gonna tell you, but not the people doing this ahead of time, this is awful. So, the way we're gonna do this is you're gonna have to bend this a little bit to get it into your nose, and it's gonna feel kind of uncomfortable, um, oh, as you can probably yeah. guess. I recommend bending it slowly, and then when, once you get it good and up there, you might wanna like cinch your nose a little bit around it so you can create a good seal, because the seal is important, because you really want it to get straight up into your brain. Yeah, I like, do. That's the critical part of this. All right, let's, uh, oh yeah, there's that and that. Now, you can fit a lot in the nose if you try. The key is just to try. Most people never do. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, that's not good. I feel like I'm burning my eyes out of my head from behind. This can't be good for your eyes. I'm actually kind of into this. I feel like my brain is an ashtray. Yeah, I mean, I guess I wouldn't want to do it every day. I definitely feel cool. Yeah, yeah. the Marlboro Man would have looked a lot cooler smoking this on top of a horse. <coughs> ah. Oh, fuck. Oh. <coughs> I'm definitely more impressed with Adam than I was before we smoked no cigarettes together. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel like I just smoked a bunch of nicotine through my nose. It reminds me of like the first time you smoke a cigarette if you smoked like five, having never done that before. I don't smoke nicotine at all, but I do have a, a medical permit for my glaucoma. Sure, uh, sure. And, and this, yeah. this is a pretty potent high for me. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. According to one evolutionary theory, the drunken monkey hypothesis, our ancestors started consuming alcohol around 10 million years ago because any fruit that had started to ferment was at its most calorically dense, at the sweetest it was going to get. Most of the evidence for this theory comes from an animal called the pintailed tree shrew. And the pintailed tree shrew survives off of drinking exclusively fermented sap from the Bertram palm. So what I've done here today is I've taken some palm sap and I've added yeast to it and I've let it ferment and we're going to take this and give it to my coworkers at Cracked I think they're gonna hate it. So here it is. I've given this two different names. When I wanna sound smart, I call it Urbooze. And when I don't care about sounding smart, I call it monkey wine. Okay. So neither of those one. names make me <laughs> think I'm gonna enjoy this. We're essentially recreating here the very first booze that people and even pre-primate animals okay. would have drank. David Christopher Bell described it as like a mixture of melted Skittles and sperm. Oh, no! <laughs> but that, like, you did! I mean, I was excited at the melted Skittles part. I don't want to do this. Nobody wants to do this. All right. My heart is pounding. Yeah, Cheers. I'm so nervous. Oh. Oh my god, I'm gonna be out. Oh, it's so bad. Oh. It's not that bad. It's kind of fine, yeah. <laughs> kind of fine, mm -hmm. really. You're good with this. It's so much oh. thicker than I thought it was it's gonna really be. It's really thick. It's very it's thick. Pretty thick. That's the problem with it. But very sweet. Uh, it does remind me of something. That. Skittles and smart. So, uh, how'd you like it, Dan? It's really sweet. It's really thick. It's, uh, like, syrup that's gone through some kind of process that I don't like. It we, tastes like a, like, maybe like a caramel? Like a, yeah. a like a burnt sugar? Yeah. But burnt is, yeah. bad mm. way. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God is dead. If you do it like I just did, where you get the stuff on the bottom and really pull that in, it's not pleasant. <laughs> when I first did this, a friend of mine suggested dropping it in coffee and seeing how that tastes. Which and friend? Who do you I, know that's like that? Sorry. I don't care to know this person. Mm. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is really good, actually. Yeah. It's not too sweet anymore. Right. And it's, it's also like, I don't need milk in this or anything, and it like washes it down. Mm -hmm. Which is what I needed. You wanted to Trojan horse the poison. You want to just sneak it in yeah. and not notice that it was there. This is a, a way to do that. It's a good vehicle for yeah, your no. shitty jug wine. 
Now, the coffee you drink every morning dates back to around the 13th century, and the first coffee drinks date back to the 3rd century. But centuries, maybe even millennia before that, the Aroma warriors of Ethiopia were taking coffee in a very different form. What they'd do is they'd mash up the cherries, which are rich in protein as well as a lot of amino acids, with the coffee grounds themselves and a bunch of ghee, which is basically butter that doesn't spoil. And then they would wear it in a bag around their neck when they went on their raids and when they went hunting. The idea behind it is that inside the leather bag, my body heat and sweat is gonna kind of cook cook all of the ghee into the coffee cherries and the grounds and turn into like this delicious chocolatey trail mix. Nice. This is uh, what the Oromo balls look like when they have finished cooking against your body heat. You'll notice it looks a lot like bear poop. Try not to think about that when you eat it. I guess I'll start. <laughs> yes, you so will. <laughs> you, you, wanna, you wanna grab a bunch like that in your fingers and then just pop it right in your mouth. Mmm. That's mm -hmm. genuinely really good. Yeah. I really like that. It's super greasy though. Super greasy. It tastes like I'm eating something. Yeah, it's like an ancient power bar sort of thing. That's the best way I would describe it, is like before you had access to energy bars or protein bars, like this is what people had, sweaty balls of, of coffee. You smell very humid. And there's no getting around that for the experience. It's like a swamp troll. So you're gonna go for a run every morning now and I can have this. Yeah. Like at work. Would it be as effective to just hang it in front of my car when I drive to work? Will that work too? Actually, I bet that would work because the sun's gonna come right in oh, through really? the window. Yeah, I imagine oh, it would swell it. Yeah. I think that would do a great so job, glad actually. I don't need to exercise. If you've read Aldous Huxley's A Brave New World, you've probably heard of the drug Soma. It's based in a real drug that's written about in the Hindu Vedas that date back three to 4,000 years or so. So what you do is you dry them out first, and then you soak them for 24 hours or so in water. And then you strain all of the mushroom bits out of that water and mix it with milk, and then you drink it and you're high for four to six hours. The best case scenario is that we all get really high and it's a bonding experience and we're all united under the throbbing pulse of the universe. And the worst case scenario is we spend four to six hours vomiting. But that hasn't happened in any of my prior tests, so you know. Now before we take it, you're supposed to, based on the instructions in the Vedas, read a prayer before you all do this. So the prayer I'm gonna read is actually a description from the Vedas of how this is supposed to feel. The soul from heaven to earth he lifts, so great and wondrous are his gifts. Men feel the God within their veins and cry loud in exulting strains. So that's what ought to happen. All right, let's pour our milk in and drink. Do we toast? Mushroom <laughs> cheers. Oh boy. Oh, it does taste like pasta. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Hands in the center. Let's do a one, two, three, drugs! <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel it. It's really cool. Because it feels like you're in nature. There's like so many things here to look at. The world is so beautiful. Just open your eyes. It's a beautiful place. I know that sounds really dumb because there's so much bad stuff happening in the world. <coughs> Love. Sometimes it's good, sometimes bad stuff happens, but sometimes there's just like so much stuff. I'm talking so much, okay. I'm gonna try to tone it down. Do you believe in God? It sort of felt like my knees were compacting and expanding as I walked yeah. in a great way. There's this feeling when I turn my head like I have not less or more, but a different level of muscular control. Oh, it's like a movie. It's so fast though. Okay, the, fly, the wings flying now. Whoa, back going back in time. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa, caveman! This is the bomb so man, but I know it's fake. Like, I'm there, but I know it's fake because that stuff is stupid, but like, I could see it. So it's like, I could see fake things. I can see like everybody's fantasies. There's just like so much good in people. Even though you see the bad, it's like on the surface. It's like plaque if you don't brush your teeth. Like, you like try hard enough. You can get to the bottom of the good. <sighs> so then I go take one, maybe come back. Yes, there we go. Uh oh. Sorry, Star. All right, welcome to the Puke Club. 40% vomit, 60% <clears throat> having a pretty good time. I am uh, high now. Oh good, yeah. you're feeling it. How are you feeling? You know those puzzles where you stare at a pattern and then a shape emerges? With acid, it looks like everything is doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. For me anyway, this is sort of the opposite of that. It's simplifying. Things took a lot less detail. I feel like everything sort of trails. Like when my eyes move, I feel like speaking, I sort of trail. I don't often take selfies, but I just took a bunch when I was lying down. I was like, oh, that's, uh, yeah. Maybe that's my my way of tripping is like, you know what, you, you, you're good. I can kind of still come back to reality still. Like I see you guys. Like, am I talking normally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every once in a while, I flash back to here and I'm here and I can stay here. But there's like so much stuff over there. Like. There's just like way more. It's like the universe. Like I feel like I could time travel. It feels like when you're standing before the holiday Ooh. doors. 
Holy, no, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Holy shit, I want what she drank. But before the holiday doors, it's not just holiday doors, it's like everything. Like, I, one of you guys is a door. Can you go through a door? Yeah, oh, yeah bring you guys with me. Yeah, yeah. There you oh, go. yeah, I'll bring there you guys go. with me. Oh, that's that'd a be good so idea. Nice. Can you feel it if I bring you guys with me? Let's okay, see. Let's Only try. one way to find never out. Never done that before. I don't know where we're going, though. Should we, do you guys care where let's, we're going? No, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, just go. go. Okay. Do you guys, are you guys anywhere? Whoa, okay, we're, we're in like, war I think? But it's not bloody, there's a bunch of stone. A lot of people in stone armor. Oh, they're the, you know those stone frozen people in China, the terracotta the warriors? Terracotta yeah, soldiers. we're terracotta warriors. Are we underground, right? Like there? No, we're above ground. Have you ever felt anything like this before? Not like this, no. The ultimate goal of any intoxicating experience is to have an impact on somebody. The real like reason I did this is because I've had very powerful, positive experiences with intoxicants over the course of my life. And I, I like the idea of being able to bring those onto other people in a positive way, because I think these substances, the reason we've been using them so long is that when they're used properly and responsibly, they can benefit us in significant ways. My hand's doing the thing where it doesn't feel like it's mine, so yeah. that's cool. You can click the button here if you want to subscribe to our channel. You can click the button here if you would like to order my book, A Brief History of Ice. It's out on August 9th, and it can teach you how to do all of these wonderful drugs with your friends and more. It's got guides on where to buy them, how to do them. That's it but it's full of great stuff. And look at how, how friends, mm. friends now. I feel like time has stopped everywhere but here, but I also know that's mm. a weird thing to say. This is definitely not yeah, my this hand. this is true. This is not mine. Put it here.